Greetings, people of God. Welcome to another glorious Sons of God broadcast. Uh, it's something, you know, the spirit is such a uh, uh, phenomena, or you could call it, or such a mysterious um, entity or existence that in the midst of being dealt with by the spirit, you really, you find yourself like, almost overwhelmingly like um not spellbound i don't want to use that word but like in a trance or something like like for you for an example like for years i was seeking god once i had found out by the grace of god that i was called to be one of the sons of god i got it on video and this is a, let me give you a little short story on how the lord called me uh his son uh, one day i was living uh, over my sister angie's house over there in Dorchester, and um, you know, I was going through a lot of things in transition, and um, you know, uh, just going through a lot of things, and I was staying with her uh, temporarily, and I was in, you know, in the back room over there, and I was reading uh, William Hen's book on called The Missing Link. Uh, William Hen is Benny Hen's brother. I know you heard of Benny Hen, but this is William Hen, and he speaks concerning the kingdom of God and the sons of God. I don't want to go into the long story about how God said that only, only the the uh, black men are sons of God. I don't want you to say, "Well, here you go, making it about color." I'm not making it about color. It it was already perpetrated upon us to be cheated out of our heritage and and color. All the character, mostly all the characters in the Bible are black, but whenever a movie come out in Hollywood, they're all white. But even in the Book of Maccabees. First or second cha uh, book of Maccabees, through verse chapter three, verse forty-eight. It said that they thought to change the image of the people and the color of their faces. And so, um, in the um, in the Bible, oh, it in the Bible, it, clear, it clearly states. that Yahshua was black. Better known as J.C. Jesus Christ. So if, if, if his feet are black, his face is black. And um, so, you know, I don't want to go all into that because that's not what I'm here. I came for. But I have many other videos over there on YouTube. You can see them. Just type in my name. My name is Minister Ron Wilkerson. My phone number is 7815315430. So, it, one, like I was saying earlier... One of the things that I was seeking God about was how many sons of God there was. And I was trying to get that answer for close to 20 years, if not 20 years. And I never got that answer. But it seemed like as we're getting closer and closer to the sons of God coming on the scene, and that, that time that that happens is whenever is when God's getting ready to bring judgment on the world. And he's going to judge the, the kingdoms of this world. And establish the kingdom of God, and with the with the sons of God. So for one time, I, I made a video be previous before this one. I had said I was getting, I thought I was getting, you know, information, revelation that it was 144,000 sons of God on Mount Zion, because Zion represents, you know, that place of God's habitation. 144,000 in, in the whole world. But I said, when I calculated down how many, you know, what jurisdiction of land does each son of God would have, it was so small, I said, this can't be it. And so the 144,000 represent all those that are included into the kingdom of God, not to how many sons of God it is. Because I had read over there, and uh, I'm going to probably have to read it from my phone. I was going to just paraphrase my way through this, but I think I want to be more exact because... Because if I just paraphrase through it, I'm going to have to still come back and um, and get more technical and tell you where all the scriptures are at. But over here in, um, in the book of Matthews, it talks about, it gave me a big clue. And this is Matthews 19.28. And it says, and Yahshua, not Jesus, his name is Yahshua. And Yahshua said unto them, Verily I say unto you, that ye which have followed me in the regeneration, when the Son of Man shall sit in his throne, 
uh, in the throne of his glory, ye also shall sit upon twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. So, you know, all, this, all these scriptures, always they've been here all the time. So, this clearly tells you that it's twelve thrones. So, that tells you that it's twelve kings. Okay, I'm going to give you another one. All right. Okay, remember in John chapter 15, verse 5, Yahshua said, I am the vine, you are the branches. Remember that one, right? So, um, over there in Revelation 22 and 2, it says, In the midst of the street of it, and on either side of the river, there was there the tree of life. So you see that? John chapter 15, verse 5. He said, I am the vine or the tree, and you are the branches. And this is where the fruit is on the branches. He said, there was the tree of life, which had twelve manner of fruits, and yielded her fruit every month. And the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nation. See that? She brought forth twelve manner of fruits. And these manner of fruits are the sons of, of, the, of the sons of God, the kings of the earth. Here's more proof. Another scripture. Okay, this one is Revelation 21 and 12. And had a, had a great wall that was high, and it had 12 gates. And at the gates were 12 angels. Now these 12 angels are the sons of God. Or either they could be the, the, you know, the head angels that are under the command of each son of God. And names were written thereon. These are the names of the 12 tribes of, of Israel. So we just now read over there in Matthew 19 that um, the disciples, each one of the disciples is going to be judging over uh, each one of the 12 tribes of Israel. And it tells you um, over there, um, I forgot what book that was in though, that it said of the tribe of Dan, there were chosen 12,000. Okay, let's, uh, let me read this one to you. Revelation 14 and 1. And I looked, and lo, a lamb stood on the on Mount Zion, and with him a hundred and forty-four thousand, having the Father's name in their forehead. So this lamb is is representing to the totality of the sons of God. And then I got another huge um, clue over there in um, 1 Corinthians twelve and twelve. I almost forgot that one. I was ready to leave it out. Alright, let me see where it is. Okay. First Corinthians twelve and twelve. See this is another clue. Twelve times twelve is hundred and forty four. And this is twelve sons of God. Remember he said be fruitful and multiply? Twelve multiplied by twelve. Is 144 as in 144,000. And now this is what 1 Corinthians 12 and 12 says. For as the body is one and has many members, talking about the body of Yahshua, better known as Jesus, the body of Yahshua, even though it's one body, it has 12 members. <laughs> and all the members of that one body, being many, uh, one body, so also is Christ. Now that was the hugest um, revelation being revealed. And it's like this thing just tipped up for me. I was seeking that thing out so hard. And now that I, I see the revelation and know the revelation, it's like, you know, so awesome. Well, here's James 5 and 7. It said, Be patient, therefore, brethren, unto the coming of the Lord. Uh, Yahshua, behold, the husband man waited for the precious fruit of the earth and has long patience for it until he received the early and the latter rain. 
So remember, uh, Yahshua, better known as Jesus, said, a, cor a separate corn or a seed of wheat falls to the ground and die, it, but it abides alone. But if it, it but if it dies, it brings forth much fruit. That much fruit were the twelve sons of God that were brought forth. And I just show you um, many scriptures that prove that. You know, I mainly was making this video for me, but I put it out there too because it's going to be some people that got to understand and know who their spiritual father is and who their king is. And for this territory of this land over here, by the grace of God, I was called to be a king. And you know, it's a glorious word, man. I was reading over there in, um, in the book of Isaiah chapter 41 and 49 and chapter 60 and 61. And you know, it was just so glorious because I thought the Lord was um, was forbidding me to come into this revelated knowledge because I wasn't fasting. But I ain't been fasting and all this revelation just tipped up on me. So, you know, you know, Paul has said something, said, like they say in, a, in that place they call the church, we're not living under the law anymore. And as to say that we don't need to keep the commandments of God anymore. And because, you know, it's a lot of laws that was in, that God executed in the Old Testament that he don't execute today. Like, it was a law that if you found out somebody that was a witch, you had the uh, okay to burn them. Now, you can't do that now. You're going to go to jail for murder. But in the Old Testament, it was a command that if you knew of a witch, that you put her to death. But we don't do stuff like that anymore. But it's other laws of God that, that, that the Catholic Church, they just out blatantly broke the law. The, in, the, in the Word of God, it said, don't call no man your father on earth. But you say, you said you're a spiritual father. Yeah, but I, I'm not on earth. I'm in the kingdom of God. See, it's another um, situation of location. You know, we're not, you see, we're of the world, but not, we're in the world, but we're not of the world. See, we have to really wrap our mind around the, you know, um, it's all about position. You know, like whatever state of, uh, state of life or existence you're in, you have to fully understand that in the, in the hand of God. Like me, it's many um, afflictions that I'm bearing and I, I have to uh, 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 endure. Because um, of the Adamic nature, it was a part of my Adamic nature that refused to submit to the rulership of God. So God had to deal with me in a certain way until I come into my, um, more into the um, reality of who we are on the inside. So God had to flick my outer man because without afflicting my outer man, my inner man would never have a chance to be born. Because sins of the outer man will... Um, cause the, the glory of the inner man not to never show forth. So, you know, sometimes people say, oh, God did this to me. Sometimes God did that for you. I just froze out on you. Every now and then I freeze out on you. But forget all that. Forget all that. But yeah, but sometimes, <laughs> sometimes God, it seems like he did something to you. So do the queen over there right there. Oh. Watch out. See, that's a queen over there. Yeah, she's sitting over there. She's my audience. Yeah. Sometimes people be saying that, uh, I can do what you want there. Not the right way. Can't even see. You can't, but I can. It's blurry. Okay, that's enough. <laughs> yeah. Your problem. Um, I can take a look and keep on ticking. Uh, so, this thing just tipped up on me, and I, I was overjoyed when I found out. Because I was like, feverishly searching to find out how many sons, sons of God it was. And you know, now that we're getting closer and closer to when the, the Lord is getting ready to bring judgment upon America, and not just America, but the whole world. In the book of Revelation, I think 11.15, it says, Now the kingdoms of this world have become the kingdom of, kingdoms of our God. And of his Christ. So that's just talking about the sons of God. And so now that we're getting closer to this, God showed me in all these scriptures how it's plainly spelled out right before my eyes. And I was like, I was like almost mad because how that the spirit is able to let you be looking at something and never see it. And you're like, how can you look at something and never see it? Because see, since the word is spirit and it's revelated, 
Revelation is a lock that God has on his word. And if you don't have the revelation, you'll never get the word. So in John 6, 63, Yahshua, better known as JC, he said, my words are spirit and they are life. So he said, what? The, the word is spirit and life? What do you mean the word is spirit and life? You know, it's just, you know, I, you know, it's not as deep as it seems. The word that spirit in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. I'm going to try to push it out again. I just fold up. Get, get on it. Get on it. But yep, in the beginning was the word. The word was with God and the word was God. The word was God and with God. But here's another awesome thing right here, right here. Remember when Yahshua, better known as, I hate saying it, but JT. Because, you know, the white Roman Catholic Church. See, why you say white Roman Catholic Church? What are you, prejudiced? No, I'm not prejudiced, but I have to um, tell the truth the same the devil. And in the book of, in, in the, uh, in the Apocrypha and in the Bible, it said that Satan deceived the whole world. You know how he did it? By having the whole world worshiping a, a Jesus. And whenever you think of Jesus, you think of a white man with this blonde, blonde or brunette hair that looked like he got a perm. But in the Bible, it said he got hair like wool. So that's total opposite violation of what the Bible said he looked like. How are you going to have hair like wool and looking like it's a perm? Straight, straight locks. Straight locks. Straight locks. Straight locks. Straight locks. I just throw that on you. Y'all got to forget about that. I just can't just keep freezing on. Right hey, Y'all hear something? Straight over there. Somebody over there talking. It's the queen. It's the queen. Why is she the queen? Because God said I'm a king, so she got to be a queen. Said, you know, he said, man, it don't seem like it. You know, everything God do don't seem like it. But it is it. It's going to rain. Build the ark. It don't seem like it. But it rained. It sure rained. It rained a long time. He said, Mary, huh? You're going to birth the savior of the world. Excuse me? You're going to birth the savior of the whole world. Uh, can you repeat that, please? I can breathe out on you. I can't help it. I just, every now and then I freeze out. But yeah, so the angel came. Mary, Joseph. You're going to birth the savior of the world. Everything God does, it don't seem like it. I keep freezing out, man. I don't know what's all that about that freezing out thing, but you heard the song "Freeze Frame." But get all that, get all that. But these videos, really, I make up with me, and these, and they like, they're like juicy, man. You know what I'm saying? Cause like, I, normally, right, I couldn't make videos unless I was fasting one day, two day, three day. But now I ain't been fasting a bit. But still, in the midst of all the my not fasting, it was something on the inside. There I go in. That had to work its way on the outside. So we had a song that said, something on the inside, working on the outside, brought about a change in my life. And Paul said, though the outward man perish. The inward man is being renewed every day. Y'all hear something? The inward man is being renewed every day. That was y'all queen. Right there. Right there. That's right. So, you know, that's what that's uh -oh. what it's all coming down to. You know, he said, take off the old man and put on the new man. The new man is within you, which is Christ. Christ in you, the whole glory. He ain't there or, you know, somewhere else. He's within you. Right here. He's, this is the kingdom of God right here. You know, he, this is, your body is the, it's the temple of God. And it's where's the throne? Inside the? Inside the temple. Could get so, a matter. Yeah, so he's sitting in, in the temple. The devil wants to sit in the temple. Queen is praising There's out. a lot of de devils out there and he's sitting in their temple. That's because, what he says. And the, yeah. He said uh, Satan is going to sit in the seat of God. 
claiming that he is God. And guess what he's doing that at? At that place you call the church. Yeah. You find all a them whole churches. Lot of devils in the church. Because it's easy to be a church member. All you gotta do is walk through the door. But in order to be a member of the kingdom of God, some change is required. Amen. You said I'm coming as I am. Yeah, but you ain't gonna say as you am. That's right. God, God gladly accepts you as he as you is. But he got some serious plans on changing you though. Mm -hmm. Like like these um Hebrew Israelites, God bless their souls. They be bringing forth the truth about the black man, but then they automatically claim themselves to be Israelites. You ain't no Israelite until you've been changed from Jacob to an Israelite. Remember the, the story about Jacob, Esau and Jacob? See, Esau and Jacob were the uh, seed of Abraham, but when, when Yahshua came to um, the Esau side of uh, Esau and Jacob, because they were twins, but one was black and one was white. So Esau, the grandson of um, Abraham, said to Yahshua, we have never been in bondage. So you know he wasn't black. Because the black folks, they had a great history of bondage. So he said, well, Abraham's our father, and we have never been in bondage. Now Jacob wouldn't have never said that. Because they, they was in bondage. See, that was the big um, revelation that these Hebrew lights um, showed me. <laughs> but like I said, even though they have a... A form of godliness. Yeah, that too. Even though they have a lot of great revelation concerning um, concerning Esau and Jacob, that's going to just make them automatically uh, the, the, uh, um, the Israelites. That make them Jacob. But that, just because you're Jacob, that don't automatically qualify you to be in the kingdom of God. You're black, but you're not a converted black. If you ain't been changed by the by the by the power of God and to, to be called Israel, you in just as much trouble as a white man. So you know this is all glorious stuff. I had to make this video because there was something about me getting this video on, you know, being recorded. You know, it was going to have something to do with the progression of my spirituality. So, Sonship out.